All right, class, so we're going to go ahead and begin. And what we're going to talk about um, first thing is a pinwheel I found online. And I found this to be very, very interesting, and I think you would too. All right, so on the board here are, um, it's a pinwheel. And on, uh, the, excuse me, uh, each section has a vocabulary word as well as other words to describe that same one. Okay? So for instance, Caitlin, happy um, could be described also as fulfilled, glad, complete. Um, whereas tender or feeling, um, you know, soft emotions, loving, intimate, um, you know, scared can be described as um, tense, like, oh, like this, or nervous, you may feel a little nervous. Um, you know, anxious, frightened, terrified, or as sad could be, um, you could use words interchangeably such as grieved, I'm grieved about this, um, I feel so dejected, like I feel sad, um, down or blue, um, you know, angry, it could be described as feeling resentful or upset, mad, irritated or agitated, okay? So as you see in this pinwheel, there are many words that can be interchangeable, okay? Um, excited, ecstatic, aroused, antsy. So we don't have to use just one word to describe it. There are many vocabulary words to do this, okay? So what I want, uh, what I want you all to do next is take about uh, three to five minutes and work in a small group. You guys are going to discuss this as well as a quote that I'm about to read to you because I don't have the PowerPoint up here on the board. So I want you to have very good listening ears as I read this to you. And then we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, we're going to take three to five minutes to discuss it. All right, so the quote that I found to be very interesting to go along with this pen wheel is this, your gut and brain have a special connection. Okay, they have a connection. Emotions like anger, anxiety, and sadness can change how you, how we digest food. I thought that was very interesting. Now go ahead, take a couple minutes to talk with your friends, break up in your uh, regular small groups to discuss this. So for instance, I want you to consider, uh, consider um, the following questions as far as a discussion um, topic. You can talk about, um, you know, what are your thoughts about how our guts and brains have special connections? Did you know that? Um, have you ever even thought about that? Or um, another take on a conversation is you can say, um, you know, think of a time when you are so upset or angry that <clears throat> it caused your stomach to get upset, right? Have you ever uh, been so sad? Like, one, you might not have even wanted to eat and it upset, so it's like, oh, I don't even want any food. Or on the flip side, you might be so excited. Let's say, Johnny, look, you went to the fair. You ate cotton candy, fried Oreos. Um, oh goodness, what else is up there? Help me out here, guys. Okay, um, you know, the, the cheese fries, the vinegar fries, all of those different things. You make it so excited, and then you want to go to the carnival. And you ride, you get so excited, but that food in your belly comes up, and it causes, what? Digestion problems, you have acid reflux, like we talked about last class, um, with uh, nutrition and, um, digestion. <clears throat> so go ahead, take a few minutes to do that. Um, and then and then we'll move on. Alright, but I definitely want to hear your thoughts. So go ahead and take a couple minutes to do that. Oh, that's very good. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Caleb, what do you think? Have you ever had a time where you experienced, um, you know, maybe an upset stomach because you were maybe sad or scared? Um, what about when you were happy? Did that did that make you feel good when you ate something like maybe like birthday cake? You know, I'm always happy at a birthday party and there's cake. All right, so good thoughts, very good. I really appreciate your conversation. All right, so class, we're going to go ahead and move on. And before I do that, I want to discuss the objective because I think it's really important to do that so we all stay on track. You keep me on track, I keep you on track. Okay. <clears throat> So what we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to um, go over uh, identifying nonfiction text, and we're also going to identify fact from opinion. Okay, we've already talked uh, briefly about this, but today we're going to dive in. 
Um, we're also going to comprehend context of nonfiction text. And um, yes, there's a little bit of information that's already going around about nonfiction text as well as fiction text. So who can tell me? Who can tell me what nonfiction text means? Okay, hey, raise your hand. Yes, John. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Katie, do you have something to add? Good. Great. All right. And so then, as far as um, you know, the outline, we're just going to go through a very, very nice flow. Um, at the end of class, I do have a couple um, quick assessments that we're going to run through. But after um, you know our guided time, our independent time, um, it's going to give us plenty of opportunity to ask questions, to engage as well as um, to prepare you for those assessments. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're going to go ahead and, um, and we're going to go ahead and look at a PowerPoint slide. And, um, and this has to do with non, uh, nonfiction. Again, I'm sorry I don't have it up here for you, but I have given you handouts. All right, so you may follow along because sometimes technology doesn't always work. So I printed it out for you. <clears throat> And what I want to do is I want to go over, um, and you also have a picture in, in your slide notes. This has to do with fiction. We're only going to talk about this very briefly because I think it's important for us to go over the difference between fiction <clears throat> and nonfiction. Because how can you know what nonfiction is if you don't know the opposite to it, right? right. So, fiction um, is basically a story from a writer's imagination. Somebody tell me, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Imagination. Yes, pretend. Pretend or fantasy is another word that you can use. Um, or not real. You know, it's not, not truthful. It's made up. Those are all very good um, definitions. All right? So you're going to see here that there are two forms of fiction. You can have a short story as well as what else? Yes, a novel. Good. Okay? Down below, you're going to see four components. And these four components um, are, one, good, plot, two, characters, setting, and theme, all right? <clears throat> so who can tell me a little bit, um, or give me an idea of what a, uh, a fictional character might be? Yes, like the Lord of the Rings. That's really good. I actually really like this series, too. Um, what about a setting? Have you ever, like, maybe even written your own little story? Um, <clears throat> I know my son does it all the time, and he always talks about like these candy lands and all of these uh, make-believe um, fictional characters and, and settings and uh, like the cheese. There's like cheeses over here, like cheese land, and it's kind of like um, the Mario Kart. But anyways, <clears throat> sorry, sorry. We're gonna go ahead. We're gonna move on, and we're gonna talk about the traits of nonfiction. I think that's very very important. <clears throat> And we're going to go over um, type or form. Number one, okay? It can be an autobiography or, or a biography, right? Or it's talk, uh, written about a person's life or one main event, okay? It has a plot. And it can be run in one setting or may have many chapters. Two, it could be the encyclopedia, which you already know about. It could be an essay. But the essay has to be based on personal or um, research. Uh, or, excuse me, or personal experience or research. In one setting, it could be paragraph form, um, and it, an essay is usually about five paragraphs, right? Very good. Right? There's a feature story, or it focuses on one topic, or it has a main idea, which we've uh, gone over that. Um, what about an interview? Okay? You see that there on your paper. Recorded word for word. It can be in one setting. Um, it also may bullet, uh, be bullet format or like a drama. Two more, newspaper articles as well as textbook. So those there are um, very good. And so we're going to go ahead, we're going to move on. And what we're going to do next is, we can pull it back up here. <clears throat> All right. So we're going to go into our guided practice section, and with this, we're going to break into our small group, um, our reading small groups. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand out, um, I'm going to hand out this um, passage here on nutrition, and <clears throat> this kind of goes with um, the information from last week. And so with this, I'm going to go ahead and hand it out. If you guys can pass them around, that would be great. Thank you. 
All right, and so at this time, um, I'm going to um, walk around the room. I'm going to check on you guys as you work on this. But I want you guys to really um, take turns reading it. It doesn't have to be fast, okay? This isn't a race, to, uh, a reading race. This is you just reading through, comprehending as much of the information as you can, asking questions um, back and forth as needed. I will, and I will probably be coming around as well to ask you questions. So be mindful of that, be prepared. Um, Great, so go ahead and begin that, and um, and I want to uh, I want to hear really good um, conversation, uh, especially after it's it's um, it's read, because there are going to be five questions I want you to answer. So go ahead and do that. All right, very good, very good. So based on this nutrition. Um, you know, here in paragraph three, it talks about um, food from animals like meat and milk. Okay, and so um, what type of um, what what is meat and milk? Is it a protein? It is. Very good. Okay, as well as um, let's see here. What are some whole grains that um, that you learned about in this passage? Why don't you talk about those? Why don't you talk also about, um, you know, your, your, your diets, okay? There's plenty to talk about. All right, it seems like everybody um, has read the information, comprehended it well. Um, I did work with a couple students who um, needed a, a bit more information, but they got it. So we're all on the same, um, <coughs> the same page so we can move on. Um, and everybody did really well answering those five questions that I had there. All right, now it is time for you to, to work individually. And this is really important because it's going to show me exactly what you know. And if there's an area where you're uncomfortable or um, you might struggle in this area, it's going to show me as well. And I'm going to be walking around to assist as needed. But I really do want to, uh, to see you do your best. And, um, and really take time to, uh, to work hard in completing this. Also, one more quick note, um, thank you for reminding me, um, is we are going to, um, I'm going to give you some highlighters to use, so what you're here, and so I'm going to go ahead and put this out on the tables for you guys to use. And I don't mind, you may use the colored pencils, you may use highlighters, um, you know, this, we have sticky tape as well in there that you can use to, um, to mark down important or key information that you find in the passages to help you comprehend the information. Thank you. Um, everyone turned it in exactly where it needed to be, and I will have those graded for you um, tonight, and you'll uh, have that tomorrow, but uh, you'll get to see that tomorrow morning. And so um, we're going to go ahead and move on. And I have um, chosen 20 statements, which are um, fact and opinion, um, based on uh, last week's, or excuse me, yesterday's lesson. And um, just a quick review, who can tell me um, what a fact is? Give me um, an exact definition or your own definition. Yes, anyone would like to, um, would anyone like to add anything to that? Great. And so, um, what, if that's a fact, what is an opinion? Exactly. It's something that you perceive to be true, okay? It might not be something that I perceive to be true. Very good. So fact is a statement, a true statement, something that is real, where an opinion is made up, or it's um, somebody's belief. It, it's not factual. There's no evidence to back it up. Um, I, I wanted to um, talk a little bit about truth, because it has a lot to do with uh, fact and opinion. And I think it's important um, to be able to demonstrate our understanding of truth, what that really is. And so I want to know, what is an opinion? What is a lie? What is truth? What is not truth? 
okay? Relating it to um, fact versus opinion. And so um, what I'd like you to do is um, think about this example. All right, there's two. True and factual statement. A healthy, balanced diet is critical for overall good health. Compared to an opinion, eating cake, chocolates, and candies is good for your health and will not cause serious problems if one uh, eats these items every day. What is true, what is not true? All right? So what I want you to do is take a couple minutes with a partner, choose a partner, take a couple minutes and um, go ahead and come up with your own example. Something that is true, something that is an opinion or not true. And go ahead and write those down on a little um, sticky note and I'm going to collect them and then we're going to go over those um, before we leave today. All right, now I would like for you guys to break into your small groups again and we're going to discuss the difference between fact and opinion. And um, you're going to, based on the passage that you've read today, um, what we're going to do is um, you guys are going to select a fact or opinion from the passage. And what you're going to do after that is um, <clears throat> you're going to dissect it, you're going to discuss it. And so um, if, for instance, there is a fact, I want you to come up with, or in your group, come up with a, um, an opinion, something to oppose that. So if there's an opinion here that you've highlighted, I want you then to create a fact, something that is factual, truthful, all right? And so, um, and so if there isn't one, I want you to make it up and really use those critical thinking skills. Passages on it um, regarding articles from, um, or excuse me, regarding articles about nutrition and digestion, um, since that's the topic of the week. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assess your ability to identify fact and opinion from the written text. And so, uh, what I'm looking for you guys to do is please underline the fact and circle the opinion. Uh, the opinion. And for those who um, for those who finish early, you may choose from a book, um, the two books that I brought, um, The Secrets Behind What We Eat by Michael Pollan or Guts, Our Digestive System by um, Seymour Simon. over um, identifying nonfiction text, we have um, identified and discussed fact and opinion, as well as um, completed the comprehension questions based on the passage that, passages that we've read. So I feel like we have definitely targeted those areas, we've completed those areas, and I feel very comfortable with what everybody did. Um, but what we're going to do as a closure is um, I want to know what you discovered from this lesson. So we're going to do the 3, 2, 1 countdown that you guys are very familiar with. And we're going to, um, what I want you to do is I want you to choose three, or excuse me, list three things um, that you did not know before this lesson about fact and fiction, or fact and opinion, nonfiction. It could be anything, or it could be something on digestion. Okay? And so then, um, I want you to um, write about two, you can write or tell me about two things that surprised you about the topic. And lastly, I want everyone to please write three to five sentences about one, you can write more than one, <clears throat> but at least write one thing that, um, that you want to start doing with what you've learned. So basically you want to apply what you've learned.